my frontal lobe is developing, guys. Hi guys, it's me, Allison, and today we're gonna be doing 21 things I learned at 21. I truly apologize if I'm out of focus or anything. My viewfinder's a little broken, so we're just gonna roll with it. As always, I have what I wanna say written down on my phone, so I'm gonna be reading from there. Number one, this one is absolutely bars. My grandma once said, your best qualities are your worst qualities. That is just so true, and that really came to light for me this year. I always do a lot of self-reflection, so I really saw how, like, I am a very empathetic and very observant person to other people's emotions, but that also makes me really sensitive. Like it's a double-edged sword. Number two, this one I bolded because it was important. It is don't dull your personality because of or for other people. Last summer, I think, was finally when it set in for me because before that I was dulling myself for someone else. When I worked at Disney, my coworkers would call it the razzle dazzle, my razzle dazzle. The razzle dazzle died when I was 20 and during the first part of when I was 21. But I remember when I knew that it was healing because over the summer we went to this like brunch, my friend brought her friend who we had never met before. So it was my first time ever meeting this girl. And I remember her just telling me, she was like, I love your personality. And I was like, you can see it? Like, I was like, it's shining through right now? The razzle dazzle is healing, it's back. Number three, becoming an adult is so weird and there are so many changes. So this is one that has been really, really relevant to me right now. I'm going through a lot of changes. What you want changes, what bothers you changes, how you approach friendships changes, etc. Also physical changes. I don't know, my frontal lobe developing out here, bro. I don't know, I, don't, I forgot what a frontal lobe does. Like my priorities are different. I think the big one for me was like friendships and stuff because I was always someone that thinks a lot about social stuff. A lot of the physical stuff is very jarring. I'm currently trying to get in shape. It hit me like a truck. Like I'm sure it was gradual, but I just noticed it in a day. Like in a day it was just like, your body's different. It's really interesting because I feel like I'm doing all these things I used to see my parents do like when I was a kid and now I finally like understand it. They'd be wearing like running or walking shoes everywhere or they'd be doing yoga or they'd be drinking kombucha or they'd want to like change out of their work clothes when they get home. There are a lot of changes that you don't anticipate. Like you think about the big changes but like there's all those small changes too. Number four I feel like I'm still processing it but just how temporary things in life are. And I think something that really spoke to me was when I was a kid, I watched How I Met Your Mother over and over and over. Like, I know that show by heart, guys. But I recently rewatched it, and it's a lot different now that I'm in my first relationship and I've had all these experiences. Like, I have a whole different perspective watching the show now. And there was a quote that really stood out to me that Ted said. He said, and that's how it goes, kids. The friends, neighbors, drinking buddies, and partners in crime you love so much when you're young, as the years go by, you just lose touch. And it's sad, but it's also like something that I've been dealing with and I was like, oh, so this is like a universal experience, like this is just something that happens. Like I want some people to be like lifelong friends, but I can tell like that effort's not being reciprocated. So it makes me sad in that regard, but I guess it was also comforting knowing that this is like a universal experience. Number five, this one's a quote from a YouTuber named Lavender. Basically it goes, if you're avoiding life, showing up to anything, that's a sign that you're not meant to be there. And I think that was really helpful to me with leaving something that I was involved in that I thought was something I wanted to pursue. I think that quote really spoke to me. I think it also applies to way back when in my color guard days. That was something I shared in a different one of these kind of videos. I thought everything made me sad, but then I realized it was actually just color guard. Like, I didn't want to go to that. So I had yet another one of those moments this year. Number six, during this year, I've also really been working on understanding people that don't think like me, that think differently. So it's like a whole different level of empathy. I like to think I am a very empathetic person, but the thing is I usually apply like my thought process to other people. I'm a very anxious person, I'm a very sensitive person, so it's usually a pretty safe bet, I feel like, to apply how I approach situations to other people because mine is just so overzealous, like mine just covers all the bases. But I think this year I've really had to learn more so how other people approach situations. Like I've been exposed to people that like genuinely function different than me, like how they approach things. Number seven, this was a quote that was somewhere on like TikTok or Instagram, one of those places, but it's basically, I believe in love because of the way that I love. I do get really sad or like dejected sometimes when I hear all these bad things about people in relationships or like seeing how little effort some people put into friendships. But I love this quote because it's like, love does exist because I'm loving that way. Like I'm loyal, reliable, I'm always putting an effort, like, that means other people out there, like, also exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I worded that right, but you get the gist. Number eight, I put another How I Met Your Mother quote in here. I was gonna combine it with the other one, but we're just gonna make it its own. It is, you will be shocked, kids, when you discover how easy it is in life to part ways with people forever. That's why when you find someone you want to keep around, you do something about it. Okay, again, that one all made me a little bit sad because I was like, why are there some people out there that don't want to keep me around? Like, ah! It's not really one that I learned this year, but I think it was just a very pretty quote about when you meet someone like really special, keep them in your lives. Like, make the effort. Go the extra mile. Number nine, this one my roommate told me like last year, but again, it's still applied to this year. So much can change in a year. 
So if you don't like the way things are right now, you have the potential to change it. It blows my mind every year, like when I do these videos, to think back to how different my life was like a year ago. The next few all have like the same theme, so just go with me on this. <laughs> Number 10, pick who you spend your energy on more wisely. As you grow up, you have a lot less time in your life, you have a lot more things going on. You have to prioritize the people that, you know, are there for you, the people that put in the effort too, the people that you like being around. Number 11, there isn't time for everyone and everything. You have to prioritize. So I think there's definitely been a shift for me to more quality over quantity. Like last year I threw this huge birthday party. To be fair, I was turning 21 and I had a lot of friends from different areas of my life. But this year I was like, you know, much more low key. Just want to hang with some of my favorite people and I'll be fine. Number 12, prioritize friendships that align with you at this moment. Don't worry so much about things that you know you wouldn't gel with anyway. I'm a big FOMO person, like, I want to be included, you know? I'm like a grandma now, guys, so like sometimes there'll be hangouts where it'd be like, I kind of have a FOMO, but then when I think about it, like, I wouldn't actually want to go to those. Like, I know I wouldn't have a good time at them, you know what I mean? So don't worry so much about those. Number 13, my gut instincts were not always right about people. Some people surprised me in a good way, and some people surprised me in a bad way. So that was a little jarring. I feel like I always really... Trust my gut, I love my intuition, I think I have a great intuition, but it's not infallible. Number 14, this one was one I already knew, but I feel like examples of it presented themselves this year. Some things people have to learn or accept on their own. There's only so much that you can do to help them. Like I'm all for helping people, I love helping people, but at some point, it's on them. Like at some point, they need to be willing to help themselves too. Number 15, social stuff kind of multiplies exponentially. Basically what I mean by that is like, if you go to a social event, more social events will come of that. I feel like more hangouts come from it. Either they come right after, or like maybe while you're there and you're socializing, you're chatting about something, you're like, hey, we should go do this in the future. We should go do this in the future. And then those plans happen. So like, if you keep going to social things, more and more plans will come of that. Number 16, assume you're wanted at social things. Your presence is a gift. This one is really hard for me because, again, I'm a very anxious person. I don't generally assume people want me at things, you know, like I like to play it safe. I feel like just having that mindset shift will help you. It's hard. I think you should have a good balance of like social awareness, but also being like, the people love me, I'm here, you know? Number 17, others aren't necessarily doing better than you, even if it appears that way. This was something I learned at one of the jobs I had during this year. Basically what happened was I thought I was doing so bad, I was so stressed all the time, they all look like they're doing so well, like it's just a me problem. It was not. It was not just a me problem. If anything, I was actually doing pretty good. I think it was just eye-opening to have that example for me. This one's a quote from Kung Fu Panda, and it really helped me when I was getting really stressed. It is, you are too concerned with what was and what will be. From Master Uwe. Basically, like, live in the present, like, take this moment in, don't spend all your time stressing about the past or the future. Number 19, this one's a classic quote. Don't wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. I don't remember what reminded me of that this year, but it's always a good quote. Number 20, be proactive with taking care of your body. And number 21, this one, I don't quite remember what it was about. I think I do. Don't drive when you're emotional or distracted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you next time. Bye, guys!